Hello, it's Jeff with AZ Camera Reviews, and today I'm not here to do any reviews. I'm here to tell you about a procedure that my friend Steve Karras and I came up with to tell what the water level is inside a hydroponic bucket uh, for less than the cost that you can buy a kit. Now, I've decided to get into hydroponic gardening and I went to a hydroponic gardening store um, at the beginning of the week and I saw this apparatus that they had and it was like $15 and I was like, that's crazy to have to spend that kind of money. So I talked to my friend Steve and he looked online at Home Depot and found some parts. Now, as you know, water always seeks its own level. So by putting these parts together, you can tell how high the water is inside your bucket without having to take the top off and disturb the root system of your hydroponic plant. So basically what it is, it's, a, uh, it's an electrical fitting and uh, a piece of plastic tubing that's got an inside diameter of a half an inch. Now I'm gonna take you along and show you what this looks like in close up and also explain for you how to do it and what materials that you're gonna need in order to make this apparatus. First thing I wanna show you here is how it joins to the side of the bucket and follow it up. Basically what I do is I put two lines here. The, uh, the bottom line is the, the bottom of the basket uh, that, that I put my planting in. And the top one is about a, a half an inch of water in the basket. So like when you're starting out your um, hydroponic plant, you want your roots to be covered initially. So I would fill it to this line initially, and then I would let it drop down at some point to here. And then once the root system starts getting um, a lot lower, I would probably adjust the water level significantly to follow that root structure. Now the first thing we're going to do is drill a hole in the side of the bucket. But <clears throat> what we want to do is we want to drill that hole about two inches to two and a half inches above the bottom of the bucket. And what I like to do is I like to put it in line with where the handle is because I'm going to end up tying it off through this hole so that you can still use the handle to pick the bucket up if, if you want. So what we're going to do is we're going to find about two and a half inches right in line with this and we're going to drill a hole. Okay, now that the hole is through, we're going to go in and we're going to clean the burrs off from around the hole. Now, just to explain, the reason why I picked a white bucket instead of a black bucket was because I figured it would be easier for you folks at home to see what's going on. So, so now we've basically cleaned the, the burrs off the front side and now we'll just go in and we'll do the burrs on the back side. So now that we've gotten all the burrs off, it's time for us to uh, put our um, watertight connector on. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to unscrew this. And then like I told you, I like to use a little bit of this uh, Boss A20. And we're going to squeeze a little bit of that Boss A20 around this rubber gasket. It makes screwing it in easier. And it doesn't catch when you're screwing it in. And uh, there's not as much friction. Plus, it helps make a better seal. So now that we've got the Boss A20 on there, we're going to take the fitting and squeeze it in and turn it until it snugs up with the side of the bucket. 
Don't over tighten it because that's not good. There you go. And you want it to be straight up and down. Okay, so now we're looking inside the bucket and uh, you can see there's that little piece that drilled out. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the hose washer and put the hose washer on the inside of this and squeeze that on there. Okay, and push it towards the bottom of the fitting. Okay, just like that. And now we're going to take the screw that was on this fitting and we're going to tighten it down so that it seals the gasket. So now you have your watertight fitting on the bucket. Everything is sealed. So now comes the time for us to put the plastic tube onto the uh, watertight fitting. So what you may want to do is take some of this Boss 820 and put some of it around uh, this to make the tube go on easier. Now what we'll do is we're going to take this piece of tube and we're going to measure it from the point where it would be all the way on the, uh, the fitting to just the top of the bucket. And obviously I didn't show you scissors, but what you're going to do is you're going to cut it. You can use a knife or you can use a pair of scissors. Now, now you can see that this is the perfect length. It comes to the top of the pail. And what you're going to do is you're going to put this onto the fitting. Now, sometimes this can be a little difficult. It'll take you a little bit of time, but once you get it on tight, you'll be good. Also, some people may like to use a clamp, but um, uh, I don't tend to use a clamp. So now that your hose is on there good and tight, it's time to affix the hose to the handle so that the hose will stay straight up. So now you're going to take this little tie wrap here that I talked about earlier. And what we're going to do is we're going to push the handle up a little bit and we're going to come out the bottom of this handle holder and we're going to take the pipe and we're just going to wrap this around. Now the reason why I do it underneath is so that you can pick it up if you want to carry the bucket someplace. Now that your project is completed, you want to water test it. Now I, I would advise you to water test it someplace where you're not going to have to worry about water dripping or running any place. So let's take uh, this other five gallon bucket and let's fill this with water. Now you'll notice that the water level will be coming up once it reaches. There it goes. It's coming up. There you go. So this is a really, really simple way of doing it. It probably costs you uh, about five bucks as opposed to 15. Pretty simple job. Uh, I want to thank Steve Karras for uh, helping me with the idea of using this watertight fitting because it made all the difference. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to drop me a line. I'm going to uh, picture the products at the end of this video and also give you a materials list. So now that I've explained what the project is about, let's talk about the materials you need for completing the project. One thing you're going to need is a Liquitite LN20 uh, fitting and it's a 90 degree fitting. You can get it at Home Depot uh, or you can get it at Lowe's. If you go online and you put in the number at Home Depot, LN20DA, uh, it'll tell you exactly where in the store it is located. And uh, they run somewhere between $2.80 and $3 each. 
Uh, the second thing you're going to need is a small hose washer. This is a standard hose washer. You're going to need a small tie wrap. Uh, this comes on just about everything that's tied down to a package or a box or whatever. It's just a piece of wire encased in a piece of plastic. The other thing you're going to uh, want to use, not everybody needs to use this, but I like to use it, is some of this Boss 820. And I like to use it on the, um, the rubber gaskets because it makes um, putting it together a lot easier and it also helps to seal. The other thing you're going to want is a three-quarter inch bit. That's for drilling through the side of the bucket. You're going to need a knife to clean out the hole uh, so that you can get all the plastic burrs off of it before you put your uh, liquid tight connector in. And last but not least, you're going to need an electric drill. So until next time, I'm Jeff with AZ Camera Reviews saying, please watch us, please like us, please share us, and most of all, please subscribe. Bye-bye.